Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, we are gathered today in prayer with Mary, our mother, who has conceived without stain of original sin. Through her fiat and magnificat, she willingly offered herself so that all peoples may discover Jesus, the Savior whom God promised to Abraham. As a church, may we learn from the ways of Mary so that we may be a church ready to take Christ in her arms the Christ who is present in the poor in the marginalized and in the oppressed today let us thank God for the many gifts that he has given us most especially for our patroness the miraculous medal may our devotion to her lead us to imitate her example in living out as Christians. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, 
all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. O God, you cause us to rejoice in your great goodness through the Immaculate Virgin Mary, so inexpressibly united with your Son, as we are supported by her matern motherly protection. May we never be without your providential love and be always dedicated to the mystery of your redemption with unbounded faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Revelation. A great sign appeared in the sky, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was with child and wailed aloud in pain, as she labored to give birth. Then another sign appeared in the sky. It was a huge red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on its heads were seven diamonds. It still swept away a third of the stars in the sky and hurled them down to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to give birth to devour her child when she was gave birth. She gave birth to a son, a male child, destined to rule all the nations with an iron rod. Her child was caught up to God and his throne. The woman herself fled into the desert where she had a place prepared by God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
From the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption and sons. As proof that you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then also an heir through God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please all stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord.
there was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter t tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. July last year, 2021, nakatanggap ako ng isang tawag mula sa aking kaibigan na si David Panlilio. Tanong niya sa akin, Father, kilala niyo po ba si Heidelin Diaz? Sabi ko naman, naririnig ko yung pangalan niya. Bakit, David? Sagot niya, Father, sa po ay lalaban sa Tokyo Olympics sa weightlifting. Pinadalahan ko po siya ng Miraculous Medal sa Tokyo para sa isuot niya at nag-organize po ako ng grupo na magdarasal ng novena to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal nine days prior to the competition for the, prior, for the particular intention na makuha niya sana ang gold medal. Kung sakasakali po kasi, yan po ang kauna-unahang gold medal na makakamit ng Pilipinas. Kung may libreng oras po kayo via Zoom online meeting, sana po ay ma-pray over nyo at pakipaliwanag na rin ang Miraculous Medal sa kanya. Nagkasundo kami na isagawa ang pray over blessing na iyon the day before the competition, July 25, 11 o'clock ng umaga, araw ng linggo noon. Sa totoo lang nung una, nag-aalangan ako kasi baka kako, ang may gusto lang naman na magsuot ng medalya, ay itong kaibigan kong si David, nandirito siya ngayon, nagsimba siya, at napilitan lamang si Heidelin. Kaya ang ginawa ko, para hindi masyadong humaba ang pre-over blessing, gumawa ako ng outline. Inilista ko doon yung mga bagay na ipapaliwanag ko at darasalin namin. Una, ipapaliwanag ko yung history, pinagmulan ng Medalya Milagrosa. Pangalawa ay yung katekesis. At panghuli, ibibigay ko sa kanya ang blessing para sa isang atleta. Ngunit habang ginagawa ko yung outline, ang lakas ng aking pakiramdam na dapat dasalin ang pag-aalay sa birhen ng Medalya Milagrosa, the act of consecration to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. Kaya't bago namin dinasal ang right of blessing for an athletic event, dinasal muna namin ang consecration prayer to Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. Mabilis lamang natapos yung aming pray over blessing at explanation sa Zoom at nag-log out na rin ako agad. Pag pagka-log out ko sa Zoom meeting, nagdasal ako na mag-isa. Sabi ko, Mama Mary, ipakita po ninyo ang inyong kapangyarihan at pamamagitan sa taong ito na dumudulog sa iyo. Kinabukasan habang naghahapunan kaming mga pare sa kumbento, 
nagring yung aking telepono. At pagsagot ko, ang kaibigan kong si David ang nasa kabilang linya. Masayang masaya, halos sumigaw na. Nang sabihin sa akin, Father, nakuha niya ang gininto ang medalya. Father answered prayer kay Mama Mary. Napanalunan ni Heidelin ang gold medal. Sabi niya sa akin, Father, manood ka sa Facebook Live, awarding na. At agad naman hinanap ko sa Facebook at nakita ko naman agad yung awarding. Nagulat ako nang makita na suot-suot ni Heidelin nakalabas ang hanyang miraculous medal at pag niya sa entablado, hinawakan niya yung kanyang miraculous medal, itinaas niya, sabay turo sa langit na parabagang sinasabing ang Diyos ang tumulong sa akin makamit ito. Si Mama Mary ang umalalay sa akin. Para po sa akin, napapanahon ang pagkapanalo ni Heidelin Diaz. Noong mga panahong iyon, ito ay nangyari sa panahong ang buong mundo ay bagsak dahil sa pandemya. Marami ang may sakit. Kulang pa ang mga bakuna. Madaming namamatay. Marami na ring negosyo ang napipilitang magsara. Maraming walang trabaho at kabuhayan. At marami rin ang dumaranas ng depresyon, anxiety, panic attacks, dala ng takot at pangamba. Sa mga oras na ito, sa gitna ng unos, may babaeng naghatid ng karangalan sa bayan. May babae na buong puso at lakas na bumuhat sa bigat na dinaranas ng lahat. At kahit sandali, sa mga oras na iyon, parang tumigil ang pag-ikot ng mundo. Panandali na nawala sa ating mga isip ang COVID at ang panganib na dala nito. Sa mga oras na iyon, napaalalahanan tayo sa ating tunay na pagkakakilanlan. Tayo ay mga Kristiyano. Tayo ay bayang sumisinta kay Maria, Pueblo Amante de Maria. Ipinapaalala sa atin na tulad ni Maria ang tinatapakan ng ahas, ang simbolo ng kasalanan at kasamaan. Kapag tayo ay nasa panig ng Diyos, kapag ang ginagawa natin ay kalooban ng Diyos, anumang pagsubok, tukso, suliranin, at kahit pandemya pa ang ating pinagdaraanan, kaya nating magtagumpay, kaya nating manalo kapag marunong tayong tumawag at tumapit sa Diyos. Si Maria ay ating hinahangaan sapagkat siya ay maganda at mabuting halimbawa sa pagsunod kay Jesus. Mary is most beautiful, Mary is most admirable because Mary's true beauty, Mary's true excellence comes from the fact that she never sought to magnify herself. Rather, Mary always sought to magnify the Lord. Ang kagandahan ni Maria ay nagmumula sa katotohanan na ang naging sentro ng buhay at paggalaw niya ay ang kagandahang loob ng Diyos na siya mismo ang nakaranas nito. Kaya naman sa tuwing tayo ay lumalapit habang lalong napapamahal si Maria sa atin, tayo naman ay inilalapit niya at itinuturo niya sa tunay na daan, katotohanan at buhay na si Jesus. Sabi ng mahal na birhen, nung kinausap niya si Santa Catalina Labore, Come to the foot of the altar. Their graces will be given on those who ask with confidence and fervor. At ano ba yung tinuturo ng mahal na birhen nung sinasabi niya ang mga salita na ito? Tinuturo niya yung tabernakulo kung saan naroon si Jesus. Si Maria, lagi tayong ihahatid at ituturo sa tunay na pinagmumula ng lahat ng grasya at biyaya ang anak niyang si Jesus. Come to the foot of the altar. Go to Jesus. Do whatever He tells you. Ang angking ganda at ng katauhan ni Maria ay nagtuturo sa atin sa katangian niya bilang modelo ng isang tapat na tagasunod na aktibong kumikilos at nagninilay. Itinuturo niya sa atin ang tunay na mahalaga sa buhay na kadalasan ay hindi napapansin at nakikita ng ating mga mata. Ang kagandahan ni Maria ay tumutukoy sa tunay na mas malalim na kagandahan. It invites us to reflect on the spiritual beauty of Mary, 
It invites us to ponder what makes Mary beautiful. Bakit nga ba laging maganda si Maria? Mayroon pong tatlong kasagutan sa katanungang ito. Una, as full of grace, she is resplendent with the glory of her Son and the beauty of holiness. Mary radiates the truth and holiness of Christ. Sinasalamin ni Maria ang katotohanan at kabanalan ni Kristo. Pangalawa, kaya laging maganda si Maria because she loved God her Son in all His radiance and all the members of the human race with a love that was full of beauty. Mary translated her love for God by her love and concern for her neighbor. Ipinamalas ni Maria ang kanyang pagmamahal sa Diyos sa pamamagitan ng kanyang pagmamahal at pagsisilbi sa kanyang kapwa. At pangatlo, si Maria ay laging maganda sapagkat she shared in God's saving plan with courage and gentleness, with cooperation and fidelity. Mary was an active hearer and doer of the Word of God. Si Maria ay aktibong tagapakinig at tagagawa ng mabuting balita ng Diyos. Kaya naman si Maria ay huwaran sa pakikibaka para sa katotohanan. Dahil lagi siyang nagsasalita ng katotohanan. Mary is beautiful because she always speaks the truth. Thus, as we grow deeper in our love and admiration of Mary, as we walk in company with the Blessed Virgin, we strive always to walk in the ways of God's justice and ask God that we may turn away from the ugliness of sin and love only the beauty that comes from the Spirit. Kaya tignan po natin ngayon ang ating mga katabi. Maganda po ba sila? Kamukha po ba ni Mama Mary yung inyong katabi? O mukhang kukunin na ni Mama Mary? Mga kapatid, tulad ng angking ganda ni Maria, nawa, masalamin din sa atin ang katotohanan ni Kristo. Tulad ng angking ganda ni Maria, nawa, maipamalas din natin ang ating pagmamahal sa Diyos, sa ating pagmamahal at pagsisilbi sa kapwa. Tulad ng angking ganda ni Maria, nawa, maging aktibo tayong makisangkot sa pagpapalaganap ng paghahari ng Diyos at ng Kanyang salita sa ating pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay, lalong-lalo na sa buhay ng iba at aba. Amen. O Mary conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you. St. Catherine Labore, pray for us. Pray for us. Please stand. Christ, our Lord, the teacher and model of all perfection, calls us all to holiness. Through the intercession of Mary, Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal, let us ask the Father, fount of all goodness, for our needs and the needs of all God's people. As we pray, Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For the Holy Church, sign and instrument of universal salvation that the holy spirit may preserve her in unity bind her in charity and strengthen her in faith so that the knowledge and love of christ our redeemer may extend evermore throughout the world we pray to the lord christ graciously hear us for the leaders of nations and for public servants 
that through the influence of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, they always may be moved to relieve suffering wherever it is found. We pray to the Lord. Christ, graciously hear us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, chosen by God as successor of St. Peter and pastor of Christ's flock, that in his unceasing ministry in the service of Catholics and of all mankind, may he always be filled with wisdom, counsel, and fortitude of the Holy Spirit, as Mary was in her lifetime. We pray to the Lord. Christ, graciously hear us. For those who are exploited and oppressed, for the victims of war and of terrorism, for prisoners, for the sick, the poor and the hungry, for the homeless, and for those without work, that Christians may offer them effective relief and the comfort of a hope that does not disappoint. We pray to the Lord. Christ, graciously hear us. For the Vincentian Fathers, the Daughters of Charity, and all who walk in the footsteps of St. Vincent de Paul, that, faithful to his charism, they may see the face of Christ and serve humbly in the poor and the sick, in abandoned children and all who suffer. We pray to the Lord. Christ, graciously hear us. For peace in the world and the unity of human family, the Christians everywhere, concerned for the poor and suffering, may cooperate with all people of goodwill in building a more just society, founded upon our Lord's new commandment. We pray to the Lord. Christ, graciously hear us. For all those taking part in this Eucharist, for our families, and for all mankind, that, by listening to the voice of Jesus, incarnate Word and Redeemer of the world, we may allow the Holy Spirit to illuminate all human activities. We pray to the Lord. Christ, graciously hear us. Almighty and merciful God, you gave the world the miraculous medal as a symbol of your immense charity and love. May we who gather today to commemorate the Blessed Virgin have hearts of compassion for all who suffer as we set the world ablaze with the charity that comes from you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
Please stand. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, as we offer to you this joyful sacrifice of praise, we honor the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. May we who rejoice in your goodness be able one day to offer you thanks forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, for you, for you preserve the most blessed Virgin Mary from all stain of original sin, so that in her, endowed with the rich fullness of your grace, you are, might prepare a worthy mother of your Son, and signify the beginning of the church, his beautiful bride without spot or wrinkle. She, the most pure virgin, was to bring forth a son, the innocent lamb, who would wipe away our offenses. You place her above all others to be for your people an advocate of grace and a model of holiness. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For to you, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take these, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Please stand. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he, make, may he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent de Paul, Angela Merici, St. Catherine Labore, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. This is Jesus, the Son of Mary, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord our God, we have been refreshed by the sacraments of everlasting redemption as we rejoice in the celebration of the Immaculate Mother of your Son. May we advance more eagerly in our journey of faith and by being participants here on earth at the table of your kingdom. May we merit to praise you together with her in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Sa ngalan po ng aming bagong rektor, Monsignor Rolly de la Cruz, kasama po ng aming paring tagapangasiwa, Father Bong Bayaras, kami po ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong komunidad sa pagdadala po dito ng banal na imahen ng Medalya Milagrosa. Tuwing sasapit po ang kanyang kapistahan, ay siya po ang naghahanda sa amin, signaling to us that our feast day of the Immaculate Conception is already near. Last year po ay ginawa niyo rin ito. Kayo po ang nagpapaalala sa amin at naghahanda sa amin ng aming puso't isipan na nalalapit na ang kapistahan ng aming patrona, Immaculada Conception. Baka po taon-taon nyo nang gawin yan. Taon-taon na rin kayong maglalakad. Salamat po sa inyo. Salamat din po kay Father Choi, Father Joel. Salamat po sa buong pamilya ng Vincentian family. Kitang-kita po ngayon ang buong pamilya. Hindi lamang po ang kaparian, hindi lamang po ang sisters, Kasama po ang pinakamarami pang mga lay devotees. Kasama po ng mga kabataan, ng mga bata na umawit sa misang ito. Kasama ng mga seminarista ng St. Vincent School of Theology. Talagang ang buong Vincentian family ay nandito. Muli po, maligayang kapistahan po ng mahal na ina ng medalya milagrosa sa ating lahat. Pagkatapos po nito ay uh, babasbasan po ang mga medalya at uh, pagkatanggap po natin ng final blessing at pagkatapos ng misa ay isusuot po sa atin ang mga miraculous medals. Let us now all stand. Almighty and merciful God, in virtue of the many apparitions on earth of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, it has placed you to work miracles again and again for our salvation. Kindly pour out your blessing upon these medals. May all who piously reverence it and devotely wear them experience the patronage of Mary Immaculate and obtain mercy from you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the holy medal, wear it in faith, and handle it with suitable devotion. May the most holy and immaculate Queen of Heaven protect and defend you. May she ever ready to renew her wondrous acts of kindness. May her intercession obtain for you whatever you humbly ask of God, both in life and in death. May you rest securely in her motherly arms. Amen. Bago rin po natin lubos ang tapusin ng pagdiriwang, nais nice din po natin magpasalamat sa Manila Cathedral na lagi pong bukas para sa ating lahat. No? Nagpapasalamat po ang Vincentian family and in behalf of Father Choi, the Director of the Miraculous Medal Apostolate and now Director of the National Shrine ng Our Lady of the Miraculous Medal. Nagpapasalamat po kami kay Father Kali, kay Monsignor Rolly, kay Father Bong Bayaras at yung atin pong outgoing rector na si Father Reggie Malikdem. At lahat po ng staff ng Manila Cathedral na tumulong po sa atin. Maraming maraming pong salamat. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing.
May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in His great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with His blessing. Amen. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.